Hello and welcome to HDD Recovery Services. Today we will be recovering data from this Kingston DT101 G2 flash drive. It's an 8 gigabyte flash drive that was sent to us uh, by the customer who has no longer uh, been able to access uh, the device. Uh, there is no obvious signs of damage uh, from you know, the enclosure part and the connector does feel like it's still fairly uh, well attached there is no wiggling it doesn't feel loose of in there so I don't think the problem is uh, connector related uh, the first step of action that we would normally take is to disassemble it and perform the inspection before I get into this I want to just make one thing very very clear uh, for all the viewers out there uh, if you plug in your drive your flash drive into the computer and it's not getting recognized and you try to install and reinstall um, uh, drivers and you tried the device on several computers chances are the problem is internal and it is related to uh, one of the hardware components um, there are two main components and I will show you guys once we have this device opened up there are two main components inside of this unit uh, one is a controller chip and which manages the memory and another one is actual memory so in order for us to recover data from the device like this we have to go directly to the source of the memory bypassing the entire printed circuit board so let me just adjust my contrast here and uh, exposure and focus a little better on the unit seems like sending still sending too much light there we go oh, I should have done that there I think that's good all right so that component with three letters here SSS that's your control chip okay this control chip operates the component that's on the other side of the device flip it upside down this device here is made by micron and that's our memory component okay the fact that it's made by micron is actually really beneficial because we will most likely be able to eliminate all the bit errors during the reading operation of the chip so the process that we use for data recovery and the process that can only help if your device is not being recognized um, is to read the contents of this chip right here using our specialized equipment um, which is either one of these guys here Both of these devices do a great job uh, with reading information directly from the memory components. Uh, that will save whatever is inside of this chip into a binary file. That binary file then gets put through certain uh, elements where uh, the data gets transformed into actual structure. And uh, that structure can be viewed as you would be As you would be viewing it uh, live on your computer all right so sorry there's some error came up I just had to take care of it real quick but we're still rolling okay so the process that we normally use to get this done is to first of all remove this memory component here in order to assist that I'm just gonna add a little bit of flux on both ends of the pins this is a TSOP 48 type of packaging for the memory component which is um, slowly getting outdated just for the lack of pins it only has 48 pins uh, for the memory to come out so anything that's higher capacity like 30 16 gigs and up usually tend to be based on the BGA 100 or BGA 152 packaging Procedure for removing um, memory components um, from those types of devices that do have BGA packaging uh, is 
the same. The only difference is, is the nozzle that we will be using uh, to assist us with that extraction process. So in our case, I'm probably going to clamp it to this one here. I'm still getting used to this jig that I just made recently. It works pretty good in terms of getting things positioned, but it does need a little bit of work to set it up. A metal clamp would probably work better. Uh, the reason why I'm not using a metal clamp in this situation is because of this preheater. It's kind of awkward uh, shaped for small components. When we work on small components, if we had bigger circuit boards, absolutely. Metal, metal clamp or omni clamps will be holding the big board and that would make it very easy for us to uh, work. But unfortunately, in this case, we only recover uh, data from um, memory cards and flash drives and those are very, very small. Um, circuit boards so therefore we're not really able to um, clamp them with any other way but uh, alligator clips and this uh, lock line setup has been working pretty well for me so I'm gonna lift this thing up and we're gonna turn on our preheater and let it run for about 30 seconds or so at the lowest temperature just to kind of get things moving all right so while it's preheating I'm gonna add a little bit of um, alcohol to this little plastic bath that I have that's for uh, the cleanup process we will be cleaning the chip later so I'll just have that handy and ready to go for us once the chip is removed we will have to uh, remove all the access solder that's on the device so with the help of uh, soldering iron, that can be very easily achieved. And um, I think we're ready to step it up to 200. Okay, and I'll turn on the rework station. We will need some wick afterwards to get the chip clean again. And um, I'll also probably use this vacuum pickup to pick the chip up and remove it off of the board once it reaches um, temperature where the solder will begin to melt. So I think we're good to go. We can start this process. I just gotta push this button here. It begins to heat up. I'm gonna lower it down only once it reaches the temperature. This thing works picks up temperature fairly quickly. We're gonna burn it at 700, I believe uh, 700 degrees, or maybe it just slightly more, whichever we had set up on a previous profile. And I'm also gonna have to turn on the fume extractor because it will start, begin to fume a little bit. As you can see the fumes are now appearing and the chip is now removed okay so we can lift this turn it off lower the temperature down on the preheater as well and begin cooling it down. Okay, so this chip, because we removed it from the printed circuit board that, that would bond it to the board with the solder, it may have some excess solder on the pins. That's what we need to clean up and get rid of. There's not a lot of excess solder, but it's there. And because it's there, 
it may not make this uh, component completely level. So in order for us to put it in the in the um, uh, adapter like this, it needs to be completely level so all of the pins lay flat on the adapter so that the adapter can make solid connection with the device. To assist us with that, we will have to probably just turn, bring the lights down. I don't know if bringing the lights down will help, but it might, it just might. Okay, so we'll um, grab a little bit of solder. That's a little bit too much, but that's okay. See that side didn't take long at all. And this side also took no time. Okay, now that the unit is cleaned up from solder, we need to remove the excess flux that's are definitely on there. To remove the flux, we're just gonna soak it in this bath. Maybe I'll turn the light on a little bit. You guys can see that nasty stuff that's all over this chip. After it soaks for a little bit, it will start to come off. Mainly, we actually have to concentrate on these pins. But obviously, since we're there already, we're gonna clean the body up as well because this is gonna go into an adapter. I don't wanna contaminate the adapter with sticky residue from this flux. And uh, I think we're done here with this. Just gonna grab a napkin. Okay, that part is finished also. And the last step would be to 
brush up the uh, pins with the with the fiberglass scratch pad. Turn on the light. Turn off the light a little bit. This just gently polishes up the, the pins to make sure that we have a really, really good and solid connection. Once the chip goes into the reader. I think we were good. We prepped the chip and now we're just going to put it in this adapter. This adapter does need more light. Okay, so that's what the adapter looks like. I don't have a bigger field of view, so I apologize about that, but in the video you guys will, in the video portion at least, you guys will see how this unit performs. Okay, so the component goes in, and then these legs, kind of cling the pins of the chip just have to make sure it's perfectly aligned everything looks good on this end just gonna align the other end the other end as you can see it's not really well aligned I'm just gonna correct it there we go okay I think this is as complete <laughs> of a process uh, that uh, anybody ever showed on YouTube. Okay, so there's our USB connector. Goes in. Sorry, it's blurry. But it's that's the USB connector there. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, we're just gonna go into the reader. I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it it's not here. I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it YouTube Kingston Kingston eight gigabyte. Now we need to ID the chip. select the correct ID for it so if we look here and let's say we want to make sure that we got this is a one gigabyte so it's just one piece in there um, we're gonna select configuration and uh, retry read retry we're gonna set it to micron set ID and we're gonna hit this button read okay so now what this unit is doing it's actually reading the information from the memory component that we've just removed and it converts it to a binary data file that will appear on the hard drive so if we go into let's say computer Drive E and into this folder that I just created YouTube Kingston. This file right here that it's creating right now contains what this chip contains. Then the stack second piece of the equipment will uh, actually 
fulfill the function of this device here and whatever this device had to do. Okay, because this device operates the memory in a specific pattern, this pattern will be determined and applied to the memory that we read out from this chip. Once it's applied, we will see the final picture. We will be able to see the contents as if we plug this working flash drive into the USB port. So because it takes a little time, we're gonna, I'm gonna let it run. Once the recording is done, I'm gonna probably put this on fast forward. Okay, so our reading uh, portion is almost coming to an end. What are the part numbers on this device? So it's 6692, okay? So we go back. Still looking. Doesn't look like this one specifically is in this database. Just gonna quickly check something out. Yes, yeah, so unfortunately, no automated solution, so the solution will need to be found manually. If you have problems with unrecognized USB flash drives or damaged memory cards that do not read in a camera, that do not read in a computer, uh, feel free to contact us and at least find out what can be done in this situation.